Hi guys. Um, so let's apply our new solution concept, perfect Bayesian equilibrium in this game. But before we do this, let's find the, uh, you know, Nash equilibrium of this game or Bayesian Nash equilibrium of this game. How can we do that? Remember, we can write down the normal form representation. Um, so how many strategies player one has? Uh, three, L, M, and R. All right, so there's gonna be three rows. And then how many strategies player two has? Uh, two, U and D. So therefore, there are going to be two columns. So L, M, and R. So when R is played, the game is over. So regardless of the second player's uh, action, strategy, I'm sorry, one and three is going to be the payoffs. Well, if player one plays L, however, the payoffs here, two, one, and here, zero, zero. If player one plays M, however, 0, 2 here, and 0, 1 here. All right, so what are the Nash equilibria? Uh, player 1 or Bayesian Nash? Uh, well, this is not an incomplete information game, so therefore uh, there is no Bayesian Nash, it's just Nash. So U is a best response here, U is a best response here, both U and D are best response here. Well, uh, given player 2 plays U, the best response is left, and here the best response is right. So you know what? There are two Nash equilibrium. But remember, by the way, Nash equilibrium and subgame perfect Nash equilibrium are exactly the same thing in this game because there is no proper subgame. So here there are two Nash equilibrium. The first one is LU and the second one is RD. All right. So uh, well, let's have a look at those Nash equilibria. So LU is one of them and RD is the other one. So here, um, I want you, I want to point out one thing. So forget about this R. If you look at this game, all right, meaning, I mean, it's not a game, I'm sorry. This, this part of the game uh, where player one plays either L or M, meaning information set two, information set two is reached. Well, here, playing U is obviously better for player two than playing D, right? Because if you play U, you're gonna get either one or two. However, if you play D, you're gonna get either zero or one. So, so clearly what we have here is zero is worse than one and one is worse than two. So D is always worse than uh, U, right? So D is kind of, I mean, it's not a, strictly dominant strategy, by the way, as you see uh, in the normal form representation, uh, D is actually giving uh, strictly, oh, I'm sorry, where, where is it? Oh, the, here D is weakly dominated, all right? However, it's not strictly dominated. And remember, eliminating weakly dominated strategies can cause us to sort of get rid of some Nash equilibrium. I, I mean, uh, we, we do not eliminate weakly dominated Nash equilibrium, uh, I'm sorry, weakly dominated strategies because we nevertheless have Nash equilibrium uh, uh, played uh, with uh, weakly dominated strategies. So in this particular game, you can say, well, why don't you eliminate uh, weakly dominated strategy D? And so that basically gets rid of this Nash equilibrium. And so uh, we look at only LU, right? I mean, that's true. That's obviously and definitely true. We should get rid of this Nash equilibrium because here it makes no sense. I mean, uh, the, the, the playing D here is clearly a non-credible threat, uh, but nevertheless, it is a threat um, and which basically drives uh, RD uh, as an ash or sort of leads, I'm not, not lead, I'm sorry, I couldn't find the correct verb. Uh, it sort of uh, makes RD Nash equilibrium. But again, D is not a credible threat. We should, we should be get, getting rid of D, uh, but how? Subgame perfection SPNE doesn't really does that. Or maybe an, an, an easy way to define a Nash equilibrium such that uh, no player plays weakly dominated strategies. Well, that's a perfect remedy and it actually works in this game, but in other games it doesn't. So for that reason, we developed a stronger, a better equilibrium notion, which is perfect Bayesian uh, uh, equilibrium. So how do we find that? Well, remember we have to have four requirements. So a, a strategy profile, is a perfect Bayesian equilibrium if it satisfies four requirements. So here, let's start, let's 
we are going to search for this strategy profile that actually satisfies those uh, four uh, requirements. So how can we start? Well, start with requirement one. Requirement one says you have to have a belief here and therefore one minus mu here. And that's the only information set, non-singleton information set. Okay, that's requirement one. Very good. Apply requirement two. Requirement two says player two should be choosing optimally given her belief. So given that her belief is mu, right, which we don't know, by the way, what mu should be, but given that it is mu, uh, what we have to do is calculate expected utility of the second player uh, when she plays u, all right, and her expected utility when she plays d. Again, under the assumption that her belief is mu. Well, her expected utility of playing u is simple. 1 times mu plus 2 times 1 minus mu. And it's 2 minus mu. That's it. What about her expected payoff of playing d? Well, 0 times mu plus 1 times 1 minus mu. So it's just 1 minus mu. So it's 1 minus mu. Regardless of the value of mu, as you can see, you know, you're subtracting mu from 2 here and from 1 here. So obviously, this guy is higher. So expected utility, expected payoff of playing u is strictly greater than expected utility of playing d for any mu in between 0 and 1. Remember, I mean, mu has to be in this range. As it is obvious from uh, this analysis, for any mu, although I don't know the value of mu, for any mu here, player 2 should be playing uh, u. So therefore, I can easily conclude, oh, by the way, let me just say it. I am come up with some strategy for player 1, strategy for player 2, and some mu value, right? This is what Bayesian is, perfect Bayesian equilibrium. So here, for any value of mu, I just learned that the strategy of the second player should be u, not d. All right. Actually, we sort of got rid of this uh, uh, unpleasant Nash equilibrium where it was player two was playing a, a weakly dominated strategy. All right, but are we going to be able to find the Nash equilibrium? Well, let's see. Well, what about S1 and what about mu? Well, let's keep going on... Uh, Requirement 2. All right, so this is requirement 2. Uh, we continue requirement 2 because player 1 should also choose optimally uh, given his belief and the strategies of the other players. Well, his belief means, uh, because this is a single decision note, he knows he's here, okay, and his opponent's strategy is S2, which is U. So given that the second player is going to play U, what is the best response for player one? Um, well, the expected payoff of player one, if he plays left, given that his opponent is playing U, is uh, uh, two. His expected payoff, well, I mean, there's no expectation going on here, but there's, I mean, I can write uh, expected payoff anyway, right? So expected payoff of playing M, given his opponent is playing U, is zero. And finally, expected payoff of playing R, given that his opponent is going to play uh, U, is 1. So what do I see? Well, obviously, L is a best response to U. So therefore, in any Bayesian Nash equilibrium, uh, player 1 should be playing left. Good. So there's only thing, one thing that I need to find is the mu value. Well... For this, I need to use requirement 2 or 3. But given that player 1 is going to play left and player 2 is going to play U, this information set is on the equilibrium path. So therefore, I need to use requirement 3. Because requirement 4 is irrelevant for this particular strategy profile. But what about the other strategy profiles? Who cares? They can't be a perfect Bayesian Nash equilibrium, right? Because we just found that if... If a strategy profile and a belief system is PBE, well, S1 has to be left, S2 has to be U. So ignore the others. Well, according to requirement three, the mu has to be, well, remember, player one is playing left for sure with probability one. So mu has to be equal to one. 
So what does that mean? That means uh, there's a unique perfect base in equilibrium in pure strategies. Why is that? Well, here, remember, I did not look at the mixed strategy best responses. I just looked at, uh, well, I mean, here there's no indifference. And so this is also pure in both mixed and pure strategies. But let's, let's ignore that. So here, as you see, there is no pure strategy uh, best response, right? So only L is a best response, not M, not R. So therefore, uh, it is a unique perfect Bayesian equilibrium in pure strategies. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Unique perfect Bayesian equilibrium in pure strategies is the following. Uh, player one plays left. Player two is playing U. And mu is equal to one. And that is the only uh, PBE. If you remember, uh, the LU is a Nash equilibrium of this game. Uh, we just incorporated this belief uh, mu, uh, but LU is a Nash equilibrium. So the question is, uh, for any game, can I say perfect Bayesian equilibrium is also a Nash equilibrium? So if I found, uh, if I find a strategy profile, uh, PBE strategy profile, is it a Nash equilibrium strategy profile? The answer is yes. And that's true for any game. All right. What does that mean? That means if you want to find PBE, all right, uh, one approach you can follow is that find the Nash equilibrium uh, by drawing the normal form representation. And then from this, uh, uh, from this set of Nash equilibria, uh, PBE is going to be one of them. And so you can basically uh, y use the try and error method and see which one of those profiles are going to PBE by applying, uh, you know, this um, uh, sequential rationality. So you have to come up with some mu, the belief system as well, obviously. Or alternatively, you can just follow this approach. Uh, start requirement one, move requirement two, and then requirement 34. At some point, you may need to come back to requirement two. Well, it depends on the problem. All right.